All right, you guys may have remembered this amplifier from a previous video. This was the dead um, 94, uh, 9304 Magnavox console amplifier. And, um, you know, I took it trade in um, towards the repair of the other one. Um, and, you know, the real value here is the chassis itself. It's got some decent paper and oil caps. Somebody has rewired the power supply. Um, you've got the two output transformers on it, but you've got this, and the choke. But you've got this dead um, power transformer here. So, uh, you know, I've got another unit like this that has a dead power transformer, and I've been looking for a long time for just a Maggie like this that maybe the one of the output transformers was dead, and I could steal the power transformer, but that hasn't panned out. So, let's um, see what we can do from a uh, replace this transformer standpoint. First thing I did here was came and measured the um, kind of center to center here on the nuts of this thing. And it's three and one eighths inches between there. And next over here, I kind of came along and measured this one. And it's two and a half inches. Uh, so three and one eighths by two and a half would be the hole size. And these holes are slotted this way, so you got a little bit of room to play with. But I was hoping to find a drop-in transformer that kind of fits into this really nicely. So while I still had the working um, 9304 on the bench earlier, uh, there was one other thing that I did um, in anticipation for this. First I pulled out a schematic here of the 9304, and I've kind of zoomed in here on just the transformer part. and. Um, so there's a couple, you know, if you look at a power transformer, what you have is a, a feed-in on one side, the black, red, and the black, and that's your primary. And then you'll have your secondaries. You'll have several sets here. This second set right here, this yellow, um, two, two windings here, this is five volts to feed the filaments here on the 5U4. Um, so I just knew I needed a transformer with a five volt filament winding. Um, then up next, up here at the top, you have this brown, yellow, and brown. And if you'll notice, it feeds to Y1 and Y2. And if you um, kind of come over here and take a look, then you can see Y1 and Y2 are off this Molex connector. And they go to a separate part of the amplifier. So you don't need Y1 and Y2 at all. So I can kind of scratch that out and mark it out. Then you notice there's a green, yellow, and green winding here. And it feeds a pilot light that's uh, in the separate part of the amplifier. And then it feeds all the filaments for V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So all the tubes in this amplifier are 6-volt filaments, the two 6EU7s and the uh, four 6BQ5s. And so you, need, you know you need something here that can feed 6-volt um, filaments and feed up to four tubes um, worth of that. And then um, that's pretty easy to find. You just need uh, probably two to three amps here on the six volt winding. Um, but then you know you need um, the plate windings, the high voltage, uh, sometimes called HT for high tension or B plus. But um, what you need here, you've got a red wire, you've got another red wire, and then you've got a red yellow that center taps. So you know you're gonna need a transformer that will do um, high voltage here across these to feed the plates of the 5U4, uh, and it's gonna have to have a center tap. And I measured the voltage, but what I did was pull the 5U4 out, so no load voltage on the other 9304. And I got, um, right here, I got 595 volts. So roughly, you know, depending on the voltage in your area at the house, somewhere between 590 and 600 volts is kind of what these things were originally designed to work on right here. So think about that. I need a 5 volt winding to feed the rectifier. I need a 6.3 volt to feed the filaments. And I need a B plus winding with a center tap around, um, somewhere around 590, 600 volts. Okay, so up next, I went to the Classic Tone website here. It's uh, classictone.net. And um, this is the, the homepage you get to. I'm going to click on Power Transformers here. And then up next, um, what I do is I scroll down here, and if you click on Classic Known Tone Part Numbers and Specifications, um, it'll take you to a page, and then you can click on Classic Tone Specification Spreadsheet. And if you click on that... Okay, when you click on that link, it downloads a spreadsheet. You can either open that in Microsoft Excel, or if you don't have that, um, Google Docs, you can open it there as well. 
And basically the spreadsheet here, if you look at it, it's got um, part number, which you can click on. It takes you to the website for that specific part number. Plate voltage winding, how many plate current amps that um, primary winding or the secondary winding on the plate voltage can handle. Whether or not there's a tap um, for a bias, uh, which you may or may not need and we won't need in this case. Um, whether there's a 6.3 volt winding, whether that 6.3 volt has center tap. Whether it has a 5 volt winding, a um, little bit about the dimensions of the, the magnetic laminations and stack. Then you get to the mounting, and what we're looking for here is called a laydown style. That's what drops down inside of a chassis. Then it gives you the mounting centers, so the exact size of the uh, corners to corners um, of the, uh, the nuts that hold these transformers in place. Your primary winding voltage, so some of these you could run on 120 and 240, some of them just 120. Some of them, you know, you got 100, 120, 220, 230. Um, typically what brand amplifier this, uh, this transformer would be designed, would have originally been designed to go into, but that's irrelevant to us. And then finally, just some comments about the, uh, the, uh, the primary and, the, and or the transformer a little bit. And so my first, um, my first, uh, detective work here took me straight to this line 19 here, which has, happens to have a two and a half by three and one eighths inch mounting center, which is exactly what we measured earlier. I'm thinking, woohoo, home run. It's got 120 or 240 volt winding here. Woohoo, 120 works perfect for us. It's lay down style. I came over here and I looked, oh, 580 volts. And I thought, hmm, I don't, that should work. It's a little lower than, you know, the 590 or 600, but it, it should work just fine. Um, when you lower the plate voltage, the uh, current may go up slightly. Um, and then you get to this part here around the plate current, 120 milliamps. I thought, hmm, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, then I noticed it had a 6.3 volt winding. It has my 5 volt winding. This thing could be a home run here. So then we started looking this uh, little transformer up a little bit. So I clicked on that link in the uh, spreadsheet. It brought me to this website page on here. Um, you can start to kind of get a picture and see what this uh, thing looks like a little bit. Um, and you notice it's using Marshall 18 watt amplifiers. And I thought, hmm, that might, that might work for us. So then I clicked on this tab here about C specifications. And it brought me to the, the wiring diagram and whatnot. And I looked here, three and one eighths by two and a half. That is perfect uh, physically. Doesn't really matter how tall it is because uh, that's going to sit above the chassis. Got my 120 volt winding here. I got my 6.3 volt at, six, at three amps. I've got my five volt winding here at uh, two amps. And then I've got my um, 290, 290, 580 volts with a center tap. I thought, hey, this is everything I need. Then I started looking a little harder at this 120 milliamps, and I really wanted to investigate that a little bit. So then I pull up my uh, data sheet for the 6BQ5s, and I start scrolling down here through these things, and I, what I find here is push-pull class AB amplifier here, value for two tubes. And what I notice is maximum signal plate current, and this is for a pair of tubes, somewhere around 75 to 92 milliamps, and that's per each side. So um, that's for the left channel. You'd also have that for the right channel. So if you take a 75 and 75 and add that up, you're sitting at 150 milliamps. Um, and we could bias it so that it didn't go much above that, that we never got it up here into the 92 milliamps. That's, that's, pretty, that's running it pretty darn hot right there. Um, typically what I see in these amplifiers is somewhere more down in the uh, 75 milliamp range. So um, so you probably want some with 150 milliamps uh, plate current available, not 120 milliamps. Otherwise you may end up with a burnt transformer yet again. So uh, I just want to validate this a little bit. So I just did a Google search and I put an EL84 push-pull amplifier uh, plate current and it popped up. First thing in the search list was the Valve Wizards website, which by the way, uh, this guy is great. Um, a guy over in the UK, I believe. And his website, if you've never gone to valvewizard.co.uk, um, a wealth of knowledge out here on just designing amplifiers. A lot of you guys ask me, how do you get into the design aspect? 
Well, this will this will start to show you here. And what this page does is it kind of walks you through the overall design. And the reason I've had people ask me before, Mark, why don't you tell us how to do the math behind biasing and or calculating the right plate load resistor or uh, cathode resistors, things of that nature? Well, it's not something trivial. Um, you really need some good mathematics and electrical background to even be able to kind of start to grasp the concepts. And you can see here in these graphs, it gets pretty complicated pretty quickly. But anyway, if you if, if you have an opportunity to read this page, uh, go out here and find it. It is there. And they're actually using the EL84 here as their example here. Uh, they plotted load lines, the, and they uh, picked, you know, um, grid resistance, the whole nine, uh, grid, grid voltage, everything. Kind of walk you through, and you can see here they're talking about two different sides of an amplifier here, so you have to figure out the plate current for both of those. But anyway, if you get down to the very bottom here, then you kind of see here on this plot, which I'm not going to get into, <laughs> be a class all in of itself, probably a three week long class. But you've got your load line here that's crossing VG0 um, at about 135 milliamps. And he gets into that and he talks about um, if you take that 135 milliamps then and do the math on it, you end up with about 17.9 watts, about an 18 watt amplifier, which is just about right for a pair of push pull uh, 6BQ5s or EL84 tubes. So, um, Somewhere between that 135 and 150 milliamps is what you really need to uh, power a transformer. Otherwise, you could end up uh, burning this thing up yet again. You know, another way I could have gone about figuring out what plate current I needed for this transformer is uh, just kind of reverse engineering some other amplifiers. So I went out to Dynakit's part, Dyna Kit Parts website where they sell uh, kits for um, amplifiers. And I know that a uh, Dynaco ST35 is a push-pull um, amplifier that uses two EL84s on each side. So I just looked up the transformer that would go to it, and you'll find the PA74 power transformer here. It's 120 volt primary. Secondary gives you 330 volts and 330 volts. So they're actually at 660 volts on this. Um, and then you'll notice, what is it at? 180 milliamps rectified. So, um, so they're giving themselves a little bit of headroom there. Probably needs about 135 to 150, but they're putting in a transformer that can handle up to 180 milliamps. If you'll notice, they sell one right below it that also works in a uh, EL84 amps. And it's the same thing, but it runs at 160 milliamps. So... Um, just kind of another way you could get at it if you don't want to go down the math route is find another amplifier that uses the same kind of output tubes in it and uh, see what see what kind of voltages and, uh, and uh, currents they're using in those uh, transformers. Okay, so I go back to my trusty spreadsheet at this point realizing that this transformer is not going to have enough plate current to feed this thing successfully or safely. So I started scrolling through the mounting centers column here, looking for other transformers that had two and a half by three and one eighths. And I would find one like this up here, two and a half by three and one eighths, but it's only 300 volts and it doesn't have a center tap. It's designed for a full wave rectified uh, circuit, which I thought, you know, I could change the way this amplifier actually is rectified and use a different type transformer. But then I thought I'm getting into a, you know, pretty uh, decent changes to the amplifier. So. I just kept scrolling and finally I realized there's not another two and one half by three and one eighths inch perfect mount drop direct drop in transformer that's going to meet my needs. So I'm like, dang. Um, so then I start scrolling looking for something close to that. And what I found was this transformer here, two and three quarter inch by three and seven sixteenths. So I'm only adding um, one quarter inch on the um, kind of the uh, length side um, of the transformer and only one s less than a sixteenth, um, you know, difference between three and one eighths and three and seven sixteenths is a sixteenth of an inch. And there's enough movement in that uh, chassis slots for that. So I'll probably end up having to elongate two of the holes um, in, the trans in the chassis uh, to get this two and three quarter to work. But I think this will drop in fairly well. I may have to do a little bit of nibbling of the whole of the transformer, but it's not going to be bad at all. It's pretty close to a direct drop in. Then I got to looking, hey, wow, we're, we're getting above. We're getting up to 610 volts. Uh, run this thing a little hotter. 
we've got 200 milliamps. We've got a lot to play with here. We've got our uh, 6.3 volt winding, and we've got 5 amps there. We've got our 5 volt winding at 3 amps. It's lay down style. It's got 120 volt primary. Looks like we are good to go with this transformer. Okay, so we clicked on the corresponding link in the transformer spreadsheet and it brought us to this website for part number 40-18029. And if you notice here, it's designed for a 40 watt or so um, amplifier and this thing was used in a lot of things like the uh, Blackface Super Reverb. So on and so forth. And then um, I scrolled down a little bit and ouch! $98.60. <laughs> I'm going to have more in this amplifier than I thought I was, you know, um, but I think it'll be a good amplifier when we get done with it. So um, I clicked on the specifications tab here and it brings me over. And then you've got the, uh, you know, you see the 3 and 7 16 by 2 and 3 fourths, which I think we can make work. Um, you can also see things here like the, um, you know, the primary winding here. Uh, it's got multiple choices here. You can either do 100, 120, 200, 220, 50, 60 hertz. Lots of options here on how you feed this thing on the primary. It also has an orange uh, kind of shielded cable here, which I like um, for transformer uh, power transformer shielding. Um, helps keep noise out. Um, then you've got options here, 610 volts or 710 volts, and you've got uh, 200 milliamps. We don't, we're not going to need the bias tap here, but it has one if we needed it. Um, 6.3 volts at 5 amps, that's more than enough to feed these six tubes. And then we've got 5 volts at 3 amps, more than enough to feed the 5U4 rectifier. So it's a little overpowered, but hey, I'd rather have that than underpowered. Um, things should run nice and cool, so let's order this thing. Okay, if you notice here, um, looks like flat rate priority on this is $16.65. So with 9860 plus 1665, $115.25 to get this transformer to me. Okay, one more thing. Back on the uh, ClassicTone.net website here, if you click on Power Transformers um, and scroll down a little bit, um, it takes you through a lot of different types. So you can find a Marshall style, a Leslie style, a Vox style, a Fender style. And you can then click on those um, if you knew the model amp that you had and uh, not have to go through the spreadsheet that I was walking you through. Or you can come down here and kind of sort by, uh, you know, hey, I've got a, uh, you know, a 20 watt amp and here's all the different ones, the Marshall, the Fender, or whatnot. But um, it's just another way to get to it. Um, you know, they also sell output transformers and chokes and various things that you might would need in restoration of a uh, vintage tube amplifier here. And another company I order a lot from, I really like these guys, you can type in tubesandmore.com um, or Antique Electronics Supply. You can scroll down here to Transformers and Chokes. And then you have also, and they carry a lot of the Hammond Transformer. The Hammond website is another good one that you could go to. But um, you might find exactly what you're looking for. It's a little harder here because you, you might find this transformer and then you got to dig in and actually find the specs for that transformer versus I love the spreadsheet they have on the Classic Tone website. And similarly, you could go to Hammond's website here, go to Power Transformer Index, kind of scroll down till you get to um, the transformer type you might would be looking for, high voltage plate and filament. They've got the 300 series, the 260 series. Let's just click on this 300 series here. And then you end up with a center, similar thing where you can kind of look up the voltages you might need. So let's find one here around 600 volts center, center tap at maybe 144 milliamps. This one have the 5 volt winding you would need. It would have the 6 volt winding, the 372DX, and then you can click on a PDF of it. But you notice it's not a lay down style, so I'd end up having this amplifier look quite differently if I use something like this. But at least it's an option. And uh, depending on the amplifier you're restoring, this may or may not work out uh, to your liking. All right, and if all else fails you in finding a uh, replacement transformer for your unit that, uh, that drops in and meets both your uh, technical specifications as well as your cosmetic needs, if all that fails you, you can always take your original power transformer and get it rewound. Uh, this is TRS, Transformer Rewinding Service. Uh, Gary up in Maine, I've used him several times myself. 
uh, do, guy does top notch work and um, he'll, he'll even take, like I had an old transformer I had wound one time that had a 110 volt primary. And when he was rewinding it, he asked me, he said, do you want the primary to now be 120 volts so you don't have to worry about it running hot and whatnot? I said, sure. Um, so keep the original factory look in place. It is the original factory transformer. He's just unwinding it and rewinding it. I will tell you, um, he says on here because of medical and family issues, he's had to slow down a little bit. Doesn't mean he stopped. It just means that uh, will take longer than it used to. And um, yeah, I thought his prices were fair, you know. It will be more expensive than going out and buying a replacement transformer just because there's a it's a labor intensive job. I think the one he the last one he did for me, he told me he had like I don't know, six or seven hours in it, something like that. Um, and so you do that math real quick and you can quickly get beyond the price of a new one. But this was in a piece of gear I had that you couldn't find a replacement for, and it was a potted transformer. And um, he rewound it. He unpotted the transformer, dug out all the old potting, rewound it, um, put it back in, and put new potting back into it. And um, there would have been no way to have bought a replacement that looked halfway decent on the amplifier. So, so I went this route. So it, it's always an option. I will tell you, these guys that do this stuff are getting few and far between. There's a new guy that's popped up recently on one of the Facebook groups out of... Uh, either China or Japan, and he's doing uh, rewinds now. He's even doing some Macintosh, um, some of the Unity output transformers, which are extremely hard to find anyone that will touch those. Um, so there's a few of them out there, but um, <laughs> you might find uh, two or three in the world at this point in time. Not a lot of people doing this these days. And I found the Facebook page for this guy. His name is Terry Kwok. Um, Poshan, P-O-S-H-A-N is his company name, and like I mentioned, he's been doing some rewinding and uh, also building of some uh, C-Core transformers. Okay, um, this week a box showed up, and it was a U.S. priority uh, flat rate medium size shipping box, and in it here you can see we've got the transformer with lots of wires here. We've got to figure out where those go. Um, pretty stout transformer, <laughs> this thing. I might even go in there and weigh it and see what it weighs, but um, as you can see here, it's a little bit bigger than the one that was in it. Um, by probably, you know, here on this side, I'm guessing maybe a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch this way. So I'm going to end up having to open the chassis up a little bit to mount this in there uh, on one side here. So we're going to pull this transformer out and do that and I'm probably going to have, my guess is I'm going to have to move this fuse holder over a little bit um, just because of this, it's likely going to be going right into the side of it, but, but maybe not, we'll see here. Okay, just use an 11 seconds inch socket here, uh, took the four bolts out, all the washers, everything came out, now this transformers are just kind of, you see they're ready to drop out the bottom, but I want to go ahead and cut the wires off at this point couple ways you can go about this. One, you can take a picture of the amp and kind of mark where things go. I know these, the green, two green ones here end up going down here to these two tube pins and feeding the series um, or uh, parallel filaments here. Um, I know that the two yellow ones have got to go down here to the uh, 5U4 here so I can just cut them off. That's another way you can do it is uh, leave you a little bit of wire hanging on there so you'll know where they go. Um, I know this red and black here, which is the, uh, I'll know it where it goes right here to this place. I can leave the black one here. And then some of these go to absolutely nowhere, as you can see. Um, so we can get rid of those as well. Um, these two, simple enough, we were going to jumper them together. Uh, they should have been jumpered back here to begin with. And that can come out and go in the garbage over here. And what do we have left? Then we have the two red ones that go to the 5U4, the, uh, the high voltage here. And we'll just cut those off and leave, leave enough space. And then lo and behold, whoops, I still got the center tap here on the high voltage that is tied to ground. And we got the old transformer out. Like I say, you can kind of see the, the differences in size. A little bit bigger. Uh, not, not, yeah, it is pretty good big. Good bit size bigger, but um, we will make this thing work. The original bolts and washers that came off of the original transformer 
Uh, good news is they fit right on here. If not, I would have had to find some nuts to, uh, to hold this back on. We're, we're good. Okay, there's good news here. Um, as you can see, what I've got is I've got the transformer kind of laid down, and I'm trying to figure out how much I need to open this spot up. And good news is it's not a ton. Uh, a couple good pieces of news here. One, I can kind of come along here and remove some of this, remove a little bit of this on one side, a little bit of here, and a little bit here with a nibbler, and this transformer should drop right down in then. Um, the good, other good news is if I go straight down from the corner here, I'm at the bolt, and if I go straight down at the corner here, I'm on the, at the bolt, and then if I come down over here, I'm going to have to notch this one just a little bit more, and the same over here, maybe just about, maybe a, uh, oh gosh, maybe a, uh, Ugh. A little more than a sixteenth of an inch, but not a whole lot more right here. Um, and this uh, should drop down in quite well then. All right, we uh, we've got the transformer mounted in here now, nice and solid. Uh, like I say, worked out perfect. Just a little bit larger than the original. You can see here on the other side, I uh, used an air nibbler and notch the case out just a little bit going around but then put the uh, some washers and the uh, lock washers back on it and uh, it's tightened up in there quite well and now at this point we just got to figure out where all these wires go and I'll walk you through that okay I took the unit back over into the workshop and I put in a fuse holder here and then I put in a hole for the um, strain relief on a power cord and I brought the power cord in and we're going to bring it over and we're going to use this little these little tiles over here for it um, but up next really what we're wanting to do is start to figure out which of these wires we're going to use and which ones we're not and so the easiest way to do that I've found is just kind of work through it a little bit by little bit let's go ahead and get the uh, the high power or um, the high voltage hooked up here we know we've got on the original transformer it was red, red, yellow and red with the red yellow being tied to ground and the red going to pin number four and the other red going to pin number six of the 5U4. Well if we pull up the um, paperwork here for this transformer um, and what you'll have here is red yellow in the middle again for the high voltage here and red and red. So if we can find the red yellow which is right here and the two red windings that are just solid red. Uh, there's other red wires here. There's a red green and a red white, but just the red yellow and the red red. We can go ahead and wire those up um, the way that it had originally, and these three will kind of be out of our way at that point. So if you'll notice the way um, right here was the original red yellow. Uh, if you notice it's tied to ground right here, we'll just tie to that same ground point. And then if you come over here to this octal socket and count from the bottom, one, two, three, there's pin four, and there's pin five, six. And you can see I've still got the little red tab, so we're going to hook the uh, two red ones here. So center tap here to ground, uh, the two red ones right here, and it doesn't matter which way the red ones go. Well, not everything goes as planned. I was trying to solder or remove the wire here from the um, from the lug on socket on a uh, pin number six here and the lug completely came out which uh, means it's broke off down inside the the wafer there so I've got to replace this tube socket like it or not okay we've got a new um, I think there's a Molex um, I can't, Belton that's it Belton um, 8 pin octal tube socket I put in I had to use a chassis punch punch out the chassis a little larger drill out the holes a little bit on each end but I think we're in good shape now and I've got this wired up to wire two here and six, and we were just about to, um, I'm sorry, four and six. We were just about to solder these two in place here. And turning out well. Okay, I just realized I was using a piece of paper uh, from another transformer for something else I'm working on right now. But uh, it's close enough. Um, but this is the actual one. So what you notice here, you've got red, red, yellow, and red, which is what we ended up using on the other. This one also has a couple bias taps. has one here, a red, white one, and a red, white one, um, and a red, green one that are offset that would let you get this 610 volts, or you can pull a 50 volt bias off of this red, white. So 
We're going to cut these other wires off and heat shrink wrap the ends of them. I'll leave just a little bit of length to them in case we ever wanted to use this transformer for something else in the future. Um, but for right now we won't be needing those. So as you can see here, this red white, we can cut it off. and I'll leave about that much. Here's another red white. I'm going to cut it off about the same. Uh, get it out of the way. There's a red green here that we won't be using. And we can cut it off about the same. And what I'll do is I'll uh, shrink wrap those individually uh, so that there's no way that they can short each other. Okay, up next, if you'll notice here, we need to wire up the two yellow wires that provide the 5 volt AC for the filaments of this 5U4 here. So pins 8 and 2 will be these two yellow wires that we need to run around and just wire up over here to pins uh, 8 and 2. Okay, we've got the two yellow wires wired up now on pins 2 and 8 here and also coming off of 2 here. If you'll notice is uh, uh, where the high voltage feeds off to come over here and feed part of the power supply. And that's where this little red wire here hooked. So I hooked it back up to pin number 2. And at this point, the rectifier is all wired up. And you can see here, we uh, shrink ripped off these three. I'll end up bundling these together and putting a bigger piece of shrink wrap once we figure out the other wires here that, oops, the other wires that we don't need. But I do know these wires right here are green wires. And these are for the um, six volt filaments. And if we come over here and look at this little piece of paper, um, you've got three wires here. You've got green, green, yellow, and green for your filaments. And we're not going to use the green, yellow, the center tap. Um, be neat if we could uh, kind of re-engineer this and float the heaters using that, but that's not the original design. I'm trying to do as little to this one as possible. So we'll snip the green, yellow off, uh, shrink wrap it, and just use the two greens. And then we'll need to tie them over here where they feed into these tubes. Okay, we've twisted the uh, green wires here together and tied them into the two tube sockets here where we're kind of the uh, parallel 6.3 volt um, filament windings feed off to feed all these tubes. There's an orange wire here that I've fed down and um, if you'll notice on here, it'll, it kind of says orange SS and what this is is it's a shield. Uh, you just want to tie it off to ground somewhere. Uh, preferably the same place you tie your chassis ground from this uh, from the power line wire. Okay, we had a few things to do here. One, I installed a power switch over here. Uh, so from the top I can just turn it on and off. Um, ran two wires around, tagged one over here, so this is where the uh, transformer is going to tie. The other one went to the other side of the fuse here, came off the other side of the fuse with a uh, thermistor that I took to the hot wire here on the uh, power cord. Took the green cord over here over to ground. Uh, took the orange shield wire over here to a ground lug that's connected to the chassis. Um, so all that should be good to go. That was not a part of what you would have to do to replace this transformer. It was a part of what I was wanting to do to this uh, Maggie to get it up and running again <laughs> properly. Um, but back to the wiring. All that's left now that we've gotten rid of this orange wire Remember, we've done the green pair, the yellow pair, the red pair, the red-yellow center tap there. We've cut off the red-white, um, two of those, the red-yellow, and the center tap for the 6.3 volt heaters here. Kind of cut all those off and shrink wrap them. All that's left here, a couple black wires, a pair of brown wires, a gray wire, and a white wire. And we've got to figure that out at this point. And if we come back over here, hmm, hang on one second. If you'll notice the way I have the trend, uh, the unit wired right now, this is one of the 120 volt lugs, this is the other 120 volt lug. So I just need to get two of these over here on one of these lugs and two of these over here on the other lugs like that and we're good to go. And as you can see here, the black and the brown and the black white and the black brown white tied together here, tied together here, soldered off here, soldered off here. But one of these is being fed through the switch over here, around through the fuse. The other, the white wires, come in directly off of the uh, power cord here. So at this point, we should be wired up. I just want to heat shrink all these together. All right, that's it. We've got all those bundled together now and kind of heat shrunk off over here to the side. Um, so they won't bother anything, but yet they're there if we ever needed to use this transformer for something else. 
Got the 5U4 rectifier wired up here with the two high voltage, the uh, two 5 volt filament windings. Wired up the uh, 6.3 volt filament windings. Center tap here on the high voltage went to ground. Um, we brought a uh, orange over to ground, uh, tied it in with the chassis ground here where I uh, uh, ground the power chassis ground. And I think that's it. Then there's the uh, the power inputs here, these two. And that's how you replace a transformer. Look, um, you could also um, find a transformer like this. You don't have to go the route I could. You could find a similar transformer on eBay or at an uh, electronics shop, maybe find something at a ham fest. Lots of different ways, but uh, we'll call this a wrap from a uh, replace the transformer standpoint. But hey, if you want to hang on for just a minute or two, we're going to get this thing uh, plugged up and playing. A couple of the things I noticed here. One, if you notice somebody put um, brought these wires over here and kind of um, put them between washers here and then tighten nuts down. And I'm going to undo that and solder them. I also noticed that this big chunk of wires here going down to the chassis is not soldered at all. Look at that. You can hear it rattling. Um, so bad ground situation right there. Okay, I've decided, I found two more cold solder joints. I've decided I'm going to go through this entire amp. Anywhere that this previous individual had done some soldering, I am going to uh, re-solder it because um, after finding four or five cold solder joints, there's likely a couple more. You know, I think whoever was working on this amp had really good intent. I just don't think they maybe had the right soldering iron or maybe enough experience. Uh, but the, the attempt they made was actually pretty good. Um, I just think uh, maybe I needed a better iron or something. Okay, we brought it up on the Variac over here and um, Believe it or not, it powered right up on the first try here. Ran a sine wave into it, everything looks good. And uh, so I thought I'd just see how this thing sounds. Transformer, nice and cool. <laughs> no issues whatsoever there. Anyway, I'm happy with it. Tubes in it are weak. Um, I, I'll probably throw a new set of uh, EL84s in it. I may check the bias out a little bit. Um, I'm just driving it with an eye, you know, an old iPod here, and um, but it's sounding great. I think it could use a little more volume. I might might tweak it a little bit. Been thinking about what to do with this amp. Uh, I don't really need it. I've got uh, half a dozen of these laying around here anyway. So I don't know, I thought I'd dream up some kind of contest where I gave this away to my viewers. So uh, stay tuned, we'll, uh, we'll dream something up here soon for that. Okay, well I've got your attention. I, might, I thought I might give you an update on just a couple things. First and foremost, the single-ended uh, KT88 build. I will be starting on that next weekend. Don't know if I'll get a video out next weekend, but you'll see something coming here in the next few weeks. Um, and then we're just going to keep cranking those out until that is done. I promised you around Labor Day I would get back to it, and uh, I'm going to hold to my promise on that. In anticipation for that, we went out and bought us a brand new um, Canon T7i uh, video camera here that's supposed to be really good at um, making digital video, and also got a uh, supposedly a really good for uh, YouTube video 
uh, boom mic mounted on it. So we're going to be using that starting next weekend as well. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it because I've just been using this, uh, just been using an old tripod here with an old, um, just a little Canon uh, video recorder on it. It's nothing, nothing special. Um, I think this uh, this unit here will end up making uh, much much better pictures, hopefully. Um, so those two updates. Oh yeah, one other one. I keep getting questions about can I share the songs that I use in some of my videos that were from my record label. And the contract I had signed with each of the records, uh, each of the bands that I put songs out for, basically said I was only licensed to use the content uh, for the purpose of releasing that record. Now, having said that, I'm real good friends with most of these bands. So I thought this fall, when things calm down a little bit, I'd shoot some emails out. See if they'd allow me to post these up on a website, uh, just audio clips, and I uh, could share those with it, you guys. So my intent's there. I'll try to get to it uh, later this fall. Thanks for watching, everyone.